a difficulty to recover from an out of control right hand spin on a training flight above Selsey Bill in West Sussex serves as a vital reminder to pilots to be aware of and to apply correct spin recovery techniques and overall flight safety measures. The instructor and his student have been practicing spins on a previous flight with no issues reported. And during the flight in question, in October 2021, they again took part in spins, covering each time to an altitude of around 5,500 feet. The instructor reports that their student was flying the Firefly aircraft correctly and made two spins to the left, which were recovered safely as expected. For a third spin during the flight, the student was asked to demonstrate the recovery technique and to recover the aircraft to the right. Despite spin entry and initial rotation all being normal, this spin caused the aircraft to be dangerously unresponsive to attempts to recover from it. The T-67 Firefly is known to have unusual spin characteristics, which require full and specific recovery technique. Throttle closed, flaps up, full opposite rudder, pause, progressive, central and forward movement of the control column were applied. The instructor had called for the spin to be recovered after two turns and they report the correct actions were taken. However, the aircraft continued to rotate and spin downwards at pace with a steep nose down attitude. At this stage, the instructor took full control of the aircraft in an attempt to exert some control over the spin and bring the aircraft into recovery. The instructor discovered that the student had correctly applied full rudder with an inch or so room left to drive the control column further forward. The instructor rectified the issue, but even with the full opposite rudder and the nose down state of the aircraft, it continued in its spin. Worryingly, the aircraft was quickly losing altitude. The instructor tried an into spin aileron, which didn't arrest the dive, before recovering the aircraft using an out of spin aileron technique. The aircraft had dropped to 1,800 feet during the spin and the pair climbed away on their return to Shoreham Airport without further incident. Post-flight checks revealed no apparent damage to the tail or rudder, and full rudder appeared to be still available. No defects were found in the tech log. Following a thorough investigation of the aircraft, the circumstances of the flight, and the instructor's description of the incident, the CAA confirmed that the incident had been a high rotational spin. Our report found that although the correct recovery actions were followed, the incident most likely occurred due to inadequate rudder application during the initial recovery. This resulted in full opposite rudder not being achieved by the time the control column was moved forward. This, coupled with the control column not being moved forward enough, stopped the aircraft from being recovered. It was also concluded that the out-of-spin aileron hadn't arrested the spin. Its application and spin ending were coincidental. Pilots should use this incident as a vital reminder of the importance of being aware of their aircraft's spin recovery guidance and techniques, as these may differ between aircraft types. Information specific to your aircraft can be found in the pilot's operating handbook. This incident also demonstrates the importance of confidently using proper recovery technique, as the failure to make full control inputs can exacerbate some situations. Pilots should familiarise themselves with how to use the emergency response plan to investigate incidents. Lastly, this incident could have had a catastrophic outcome. The instructor and pilot were both wearing parachutes, and the incident serves as an essential reminder to crews to not just wear parachutes, but to be aware of and practiced in using them. Further important advice is available in the CAA Safety Sense leaflet on loss of control, stall and spin awareness. Let's all fly safe.